Day 39, Love Endures. Love Never Fails, 1 Corinthians 13.8. Sorry, after I read Day 38, I had to go into the bedroom really quick and go love on Tanya. She's still sleeping, so I gave her a couple kisses and a hug. Did that thing where she's cuddled up in her blanket, or in my blanket, and I went on top of her and cuddled her. Of all the things love dares you to do, this is the ultimate though threatened it keeps pursuing. Though challenged, it keeps moving forward. Though mistreated and rejoiced, it refuses to give up. Love never fails. Many times when a marriage is in crisis, the spouse who is trying to make things work will go to the, others, to the other, declaring in no uncertain terms that no matter what has happened in the past, he or she is committed to this marriage, that a love can be counted on to last. They promise. But not wanting to hear this yet, the other spouse holds their position. They still want out. They don't see this marriage lasting long term, not do they even want it to anymore. The partner who has just laid his or her heart on the line, extending the olive branch, can't handle the rejection, so they withdraw their statement, fine, if that's the, the way you want it, that's the way it'll be. But if love is really love, it doesn't waffle when it's not received the way you want it to. If Love can be told to quit loving, then it's not really love. Love that is from God is unending, unstoppable. If the love of its affection, if the object of its affection doesn't choose to receive it, love keeps giving anyway. Love never fails. Never. That's what Jesus' love is like. His disciples were nothing if not unpredictable. After their final Passover meal together, when Jesus told them they would all forsake him before the night was over, Peter declared, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Matthew 26, 33 and 35. All the other disciples echoed this very same promise. But later that night, Jesus' inner circle followers, Peter, James, and John, would sleep through Christ's agony in the garden. On the way to Christ's crucifixion, Peter would deny him three times in the courtyard, but at the precise moment the Bible says Jesus turned and looked at him. His men had failed him again within hours of their sworn promises, yet he never stopped loving them, because he and his love are the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13.8 when you have done everything within your power to obey God, your spouse may still forsake you and walk away, just as Jesus' followers did to him. But if your marriage fails, if your spouse walks away, walks away, let it not be because you gave up or stopped loving them. Love never fails. Of the time of the nine fruits of the Spirit, listen to Galatians 5, the first of all is love. And because this unchanging Holy Spirit is, a, is its source, the same Holy Spirit who dwells in the hearts of the all believers, when he loves, he creates in you, is unchanging as well. It is based on the will of God, the calling of God, and the word of God. All unchanging things, the Bible declares them irrevocable. Romans 11.29 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Luke 21.33 only a few days ago, you were loved there to build your marriage on the word of God. That's because when all else fails, the truth of God will be standing, will still be standing. Along the way, you have also been dared to be patient, to be unselfish, to sacrifice for your mate's needs. They are not just loving ideas existing in isolation. Each quality of love outlined in this book is based on the love of God, captured and expressed in the word of God. The unchanging word of God, no challenge, no challenge or circumstance can occur that will ever put an expiration date on him or his love. Therefore, your love, made of the same substance, bears the same unchanging characteristics. Love never fails. So today, your dare is to put your unfailing love into the most powerful personal words you can. This is your chance to declare that no matter what imperfections exist, both in you and your spouse, your love is greater still. No matter what they've done or how often they've done it, you choose to love them anyway. Though you've been far from ready, steady in your treatment of them over the years, 
Your days of being inconsistent in love are over. You accept this one man or woman as God's special gift to you, and you promise to love them until death. You're saying to your spouse, even if you don't like what you're reading, even if you don't like me, I choose to love you anyways, because love never fails. <sighs> Today's dare. Spend time in your personal prayer, then write a letter of commitment and resolve to your spouse. Include why you are committing to this marriage until death, and that you have proposed to love them no matter what. Leave it in a place that your mate will find it. What were some of the hesitation you had in writing this letter? How do you expect your spouse to respond to it? How did God help you in writing it? And what did your pro process teach you about yourself? Okay, so apparently God's been preparing me for this for these last few chapters. Um, I'm just going to keep it keep it real here. I've been doing this very thing. Uh, in the beginning of our relationship, when Tanya first was a little hesitant, I would write her a lot of love letters uh, and text. Welcome to the 21st century. And then in person, I would tell her the, the same thing in person. So it wasn't just me texting and then leaving it at that. Um, I would spend a lot of time um, alone at work. And when I'm alone at work, I have time to think. And I would think about her. And I still do, actually. But one of the things I'm doing constantly with our relationship is letting her know God's put you in my life. And I want to love you no matter what. No matter how ugly you get or how ugly I get, I'm going to love you. And it's because love never fails. It really doesn't. And I believe this with all my heart. This is the first relationship where God is not just a part of the relationship, but he's the relationship. He's the centerpiece to my relationship. And I finally understand what they mean by equally yoked. And I can say, I can say with confidence, Ty and I are very equally yoked. In areas that we're not, he has blessed me with someone that can lift me up in those areas. And God's blessed her and put someone in her life to lift things in for her. Love never fails. I agree with that whole heart. And this is a that was a beautiful chapter. The chapter four was just as beautiful. Because I resonate with them. Anywho, thank you for watching.